is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and there is no other. <clears throat> Satan's objective is to control your mind. He whispers in your ear, you're going to be totally defeated in this trial. If you don't have on your helmet, that thought is going to penetrate your brain and take you over. Put on your helmet. Jesus doesn't do it for you. You do it. First Peter 4 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials you go through, but rejoice that when his glory is revealed, that you may be glad with exceeding joy. Peter says there's joy in victory. The prince of darkness comes and says you're never going to get well. Put on the helmet of hope. It says by his stripes I am healed. Jesus Christ is still the great physician. And the great physician is walking the aisles of this assembly right now. James 5, is there anyone sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing them with oil. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. God is still a prayer answering, healing God. Give him praise in the house of God. And if you think you have something desperate in your life going on, listen to this testimony of a church member, a mother, 35, with cancer, with two children. It taught me one of the greatest lessons about adjusting your attitude, your helmet, in a day of trouble. Her doctor said that she would die any day. When I visit her in the hospital, she said, Pastor, Today when I awoke, I realized this was the best day of my life ever. I was stunned. I felt a lump in my throat and tears forming in my eyes. She said, last night I did not know if I would live to see this day. But today it's a gift of God and I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to celebrate the blessings God has given to me. I'm going to celebrate the burdens he's given me to carry. I'm going to celebrate the hardships that have come to make me stronger. I'm going to celebrate with my head held high and she didn't have a hair in her head. I'm going to celebrate by looking at the gifts of God, the beauty of the sunrise, the morning dew on the grass, the birds singing, the trees, the beautiful flowers, because I may not see them tomorrow. I'm going to celebrate by hugging and kissing my children passionately. I'll give a sincere compliment to someone who is truly down. I'll stop worrying about what I don't have because I have today and God is with me. Tonight, when the stars come out and the moon glows, I'll look at them as long as I can because I may not see them tomorrow. With my last breath tonight, I will thank God for this beautiful day. It's been the best day of my life, period. She had on her helmet. She was in the storm, but the storm was not in her. Do you have your helmet on? Do you? Put it on. God has given you a shield to put around your heart, soul, mind, and body are you still running around complaining because somebody got your seat in the Christmas pageant last year? Mm -hmm. Get a life! Grow up! Take off your baby diapers and put on your big boy breeches. You're shaving now. <laughs> Satan whispers to you, you're going to die in debt. You're not ever really going to prosper. Let me give you four steps that will give you a rocket ride to financial freedom. One, tithe. Why uh -huh. should you tithe? tithe? Because the Bible says if you don't, you live under a financial curse. Malachi, the third chapter, ninth verse. Plastic surgery see. helps. That would be cutting up your credit cards. <laughs> Stop spending more than you make. That's simple. Go to work. Nothing in your life will work until you do. That's God's formula.
Amen, brother. Quit waiting for the government to send it to you in the mailbox. You start <laughs> making something happen for yourself. Yes, sir. Psalms 37, King David says, I have been young, now I am, old, I am old, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. Philippians 4, now my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. Moses, it is the Lord that gives you the power to get well. Psalms 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of living water, and his leaf shall not wither, and what? So ever he doeth shall prosper. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let's take some time for reflection. Let's reflect on your helmet of hope for a moment. Can you remember a time when you wanted to accomplish something really important? Before you got started, you were engulfed with thoughts of failure. Let me see your hand. You're much more honest than that 830 crowd. <laughs> Feelings that you would not succeed. How many of you have ever given your best effort and it looked like you were failing? I want to give you this illustration because maybe you haven't yet given your best effort. A photographer was on a photo safari in Africa. He found his guide. His guide had a huge rifle. The guide said, that camera is not going to help you. We're going out here where there are lions who eat people for lunch. The photographer said, oh, really all I need is this camera. He said, help yourself. They started walking into the brush. And a few hundred yards, sure enough, they stumbled upon a big, massive male lion. Wow. who crouched, his teeth were shining. The man looked, and about 20 yards, there was a tree, the only tree in sight. Mm -hmm. The first limb is about 10 feet up, and he starts running with all of his might toward that tree. He stops, and he looks behind him. The lion is there, ready to have him for lunch, and he said to himself, Self, we have to give our very best effort right now. And he jumped with everything he had and he missed the limb but he got it on the way down <laughs> maybe you haven't given your best effort yet have you ever tried to break a bad habit mm, I'm going to get right by this in a hurry but just listen but your first attempts were invaded by thought that you would not be able to keep your resolve. How many of you have had that feeling January the 3rd? Mm -hmm. You decide that you're going to lose weight, for instance, and you're going to win the Battle of the Bulge. This time, now, or never. Do or die. I'm going to make it happen this year. And the next day, you eat everything in the refrigerator. <laughs> Just the very thought of missing food makes you consume more. <laughs> you walk by the refrigerator, the door flies open, chocolate chip cookies come off the tray and attack you in the mouth. Has that ever happened to you? The rest of you folks, I'm preaching on lying next week. And living out your faith, do you find that when you make yourself grand promises only to find yourself procrastinating with excuses, you really want to do something for the Lord and you try and you prepare and then in the day of opportunity you just fumble the ball and you've never really tried again. It reminds me of the story of the barber. He was a good Baptist barber. He wanted to be a soul winner, so he went to a soul winning <coughs> class and seminar, and he memorized all of those verses, and he got them in his mind. He graduated. He received his certificate. The next day, he went back to his barber shop. He promised himself, I'm going to witness to the first person that comes through the door. 
he failed. He said, well, I, I witnessed before lunch. He failed. And then he said, well, I'll witness by 3 o'clock for sure. He failed. And then he said, for certain, I'm going to do it at 5 o'clock. At 4.55, a man six foot four, 250 pounds walked in and sat down in his one-chair shop. He pulled down the blinds. He went over and lathered his face, and he pulled out the leather strap and began to work his razor back and forth. And as he worked his razor back and forth, his mind went blank. He couldn't think of one verse. He just got frustrated. And he was going faster and faster and faster and faster. Now the guy's staring at him, and here he is going faster and faster, faster. And finally, in frustration, he looks at him and said, Are you ready to die? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn it to something personal. If you're married, have you ever thought your marriage had stalled and gotten on a plateau? Or you ever said to yourself, well, that's just the way he is. Uh, he's like his daddy. I'll just have to live with it. Or she's like her mother. She's not ever going to change. And we're just like everybody else. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands because there'd be 200 taxes out here today trying to carry people home. Mm -hmm. A wife took her husband to the doctor and she told the doctor, I want you to give my husband a complete physical. He has no fire. He has no life. He has no energy. We've tried Niagara. We've tried Viagra and nothing works. Mm -hmm. The doctor examined the husband, sent him out, and brought the angry wife in the office. And the doctor said to the wife, all your husband needs to have hope and fire in his life is for you to stop watching television and cook three good meals a day and have a reasonable sex life with this man. The wife stormed out the office. She slammed the door, went out and got in the car she was driving. And on the way home, the husband said to the wife, what did the doctor say to you? And she looked at him and said, the doctor said, you are going to die. <laughs> There's more truth in that than you know. As parents, our thinking about our children can be invaded by disappointment and discouragement. At times, your mind is flooded with worry and anxiety. Are they ever really going to grow up? A father said to his son, I don't care if there is a crack in the wall in the basement. I want you to stop telling the people at school you come from a broken home. <laughs> I had my father watching on national television some time ago wrote me a letter saying, Pastor Hagee said, how, do you, how did you raise your daughters to become such godly women? And I'm glad to give you several of my rules for dating one of my daughters when they lived at my house. Now, understand when they got married and left my house, I broke their dish. And they were under another authority. But while they were at my house, rule one, they never dated anyone that was not a believer. Don't even think about it. Period. Rule two, if you pull into my driveway and honk, you had better be delivering a package because you're sure not picking up anybody. <laughs> Rule three, do not touch my daughter in front of me. You may glance at her so long as you do not peer below her neckline. If you cannot keep your hands off my daughter's body, I'll remove them for you. Do you have a Bible verse for that? I sure do. Matthew 5.30 says, If your hand offends you, cut it off. <laughs> <coughs> now think about the church. What do you expect from your church? What is your vision for the future of Cornerstone Church? What if all of the members in the church had your level of commitment? 
your level of faithful attendance. For those of you who come Christmas, Christmas and Easter. For those of you, the giving. If everyone gave like you, could we pay the light bill? If everyone prayed like you, would the devil live in the lobby of this church? What kind of church would this be? Don't measure your commitment by the other people. Measure it by the Word of God. This book says, Amen. Present your bodies a living sacrifice unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. Jesus said, He that is not willing to forsake houses and land, mothers and fathers, cannot be my disciple. John the Revelator said about the New Testament Christians, they loved up their lives unto the death. They died rather than deny Christ. If it rains on Sunday, people stay home. They'll go to a football game and fight snow flurries and freeze <laughs> and think nothing of it. If you won't come to God's house, why should God take you to his house? <laughs> this illustration in our close. I'm talking about commitment. When you read in Roman history of the death of Perpetua, a 23-year-old mother who had one child, her sin was that she had said, Jesus is Lord. And for that, the Roman government considered her an enemy of the state. They put her in the Roman Colosseum and put her in a cargo net. From the other end of the Colosseum, there was a bull that had his horns tipped with brass. That bull charged the cargo net over and over and over until her body was an emaciated mess of blood and bone. With her last ounce of strength, she reached to the Christians who were on the wall saying, Maranatha. Maranatha means the king is coming and lifted the three fingers of the first century church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and she died. I wonder if there would ever be a time if you would die for your faith. Where would we really be as a nation? Put on the helmet of hope. It drove Joshua and Caleb, 80 years of age, to climb the mountain and to take the land back for Israel. It caused David to take five stones and face Goliath. Why five? Because Goliath had four brothers. He didn't come to start a family feud. He came to kill them all. St. Paul, I've been beaten. I've been left for dead. I've been whipped by the Romans. I've been put in prison. I've been bitten by snakes. I've sung in the midnight hour in the jail of Philippi. There is no whining, no self-pity, no why me, just. We're more than conquerors through Christ who gives us all of these things. The Lord our God is looking for a victorious church. A church that will take a stand in the evil day. Ladies and gentlemen, the soul of America is on the line. I challenge you to put on the helmet of hope, and when evil comes down the street, take it on. Do not back up. Do not surrender. Our God is an awesome God, and the victory is ours in Christ the Lord. Give him praise and glory in the house of God. Can we stand? Can we stand together? How many of you in this room would say, Pastor, I do not have my helmet on. I've surrendered to the spirit of despair, and I need to put my helmet on today. If that describes you, would you slip your hand up right where you are? God bless you. Hundreds. How many of you can say, Pastor, there's an area in my life where I need the rebirth of hope. Maybe it's in your marriage, or with your children, or in your business, or with your health. But there's an area of your life where you need to have a rebirth of hope. Let me see your hand. Would you raise it? Hundreds, probably 90% of this congregation. How many of you here can say, I am consumed with a feeling that I will not succeed? Let me see your hand where you are. 
God can invade your mind and your life today, and that can change. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Those of you that are watching by television across America and around the world, you can pray this prayer. And at this very moment, you can put on the helmet of salvation and your life, your health, your ministry, your business, everything you touch will turn around because there's a living fire in the depth of your soul that will overcome every adversary you face. Pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I come before your holy throne to receive hope, hope that comes from the Lord. Today in faith believing, I put on the helmet of hope to receive the favor of God, the protection of God, and the blessing of God, that every feeling that, every feeling, that I will not succeed, I will not succeed die, right die right now. From this moment forward, this moment by, forward God's by God's I'm grace, I'm going to be successful. I'm going to achieve going to my, achieve divine, destiny my divine, destiny divine destiny because of the hope I have because of the hope in the living God. In the living Give the Lord praise and glory in the house of God. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Raise your hand for the blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And may the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his peace. May you walk from this building with a divine assurance that you're going to accomplish your destiny. Put him on the helmet of hope. Nothing is impossible to those that believe. What God has planned for you will become a reality because no force on this earth can prevent you from heaven's destiny. Receive that blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.